Hey guys, welcome to MB Tech Talker. My name is Matt. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure file blocking security profiles using Palo Alto Network's best practices. I'm going to be doing all of this using a VM series Palo Alto Next Generation firewall inside our VMware workstation. So what is a file blocking security profile? Well, Palo Alto Network's next generation firewalls use file blocking profiles to block certain file types over specific applications that are allowed through a security policy. The file blocking profile can be configured to alert or block on traffic that is either being uploaded or downloaded. If you're uncertain which files to block straight away, we can use Palo Alto's best practice recommendations as a starting point. This will give you the ability to monitor file types that are flowing through the firewall and in turn make more informed decisions on which files should be allowed or blocked. If you check out the IronSkirt documentation, you can see there are a set of file blocking profiles that can be used to explicitly block file types which represents the most common malicious files that are typically not expected to cross the security zone boundary. File types that are ignored from best practice file blocking security profiles like EXEs can be used for legitimate business reasons. However, they shouldn't be forgotten about and should be reviewed regularly by your security team. So for those of you who haven't seen my lab topology, this diagram shows the setup. In order to test file blocking, I will be using a Windows 2016 server running a IIS web service. Uh, I have a number of different file types that will be accessible through the browser using the standard web browser in TCP port 80. I will be using the Windows 10 lab client to download the files to demonstrate the file blocking security profiles. Now you could use a cloud storage provider application like Google Drive. However, be mindful you will need to decrypt the Google Drive SSL traffic to see the files. Okay, so I've logged into the firewall. Let's check out the file blocking security profiles by going to the objects tab and then under security profiles and then file blocking. Here we can see two predefined file blocking profiles that will block files commonly seen in malware attack campaigns. So the basic file blocking profile would generally be attached to security policy rules that allows traffic to and from less sensitive application. It also provides a continue action that prompts the user to confirm that they're sure they want to download the encrypted RAR or encrypted zip file. The rule at the bottom is to alert on all other file types so that you have complete visibility of traffic going through the allow rule. It's recommended to attach the strict file blocking profile to security policy rules allowing traffic to and from more sensitive applications. This profile blocks the same file types as the basic profile, however it completely blocks flash, tar, multi-level encoding, cab, MSI, encrypted RAR and encrypted zip files without the continue prompt. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this lab is configure four additional iron skillet file blocking profiles, which are outbound, inbound, internal, and alert only. So outbound, inbound, and internal are identical. They are added to security policy rules in the correct direction of the traffic. Uh, this makes it easier to make adjustments to each of the file blocking profiles individually. The alert only profile does what it says on the tin. It allows and logs the traffic uh, this gives you the ability to monitor the file types passing through the given security policy rule and makes it easier to make decisions on what file types to allow and block. So let's create the outbound file blocking profile first. To make this process quicker, we can clone the basic file blocking profile by highlighting it and then clicking clone and then click OK. Then we can click on the new cloned profile and then we're going to name this to outbound FB then we're going to rename this to block make sure that's unticked and we're going to scroll down to the continue rule and we're going to delete that one and then we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to rename this to alert all and then click OK okay so we're going to use this uh, new iron skillet file blocking profile as a template to create three more profiles. So we're simply just going to clone this, the outbound file blocking, click OK, and then we're going to click on that, and then we're going to 
rename this outbound FB and then click OK. Then we're going to clone that one and we're going to click OK and then we're going to rename this one to internal FB. OK, and then the final one, we're going to clone this one. Click OK, but this one is going to be the alert only. So if we do alert only FB, and what we're going to do on this one is we're going to delete the block. And then we're going to have this as alert only. And then click OK. So we now have the two predefined file blocking profiles and additionally the four iron skillet best practices profiles. It's up to you which ones you want to use. In my lab, I'm going to be using the internal file blocking profile. So let's add this profile to the correct security profile group. So if we go to the security profile groups section and then we're going to click on internal. And then in the file blocking drop down, we're going to be selecting the internal file blocking profile and then click OK. The internal security profile group is already attached to a policy. So let's check that out. We click, click on the policy tab and go to the security rules. And it's this rule here users to DC. This is the security rules that um, security rule that is allowing traffic between the Windows 10 um, lab client and the IIS web server. So if I hover over the profile, you can see it's called internal. So we're all ready to go with this. So all we need to do is just click commit and then head over to the Windows 10 client. Okay, so I'm over at the Windows 10 lab client. Let's open up the browser. So I've got a shortcut here, which will take me to the web server. And as you can see, we've got various different files that and I can uh, attempt to download these now. So let's click on the .exe file. Okay, so file blocking is working for .exes. And let's click on the RAR file, same for the RAR. And the .jar, yep. So it's block per policy. So let's try downloading this uh, PDF. So I'm gonna do save link as, it's a PDF file it's already, already there in the downloads, but I'm going to overwrite that. As, as you can see, it downloaded successfully. So now we can go back to the firewall and check out the data filtering logs. So if we minimize this and go to the monitor tab, and we're on the data filtering. And as you can see, the first one in was the .exe, and it was denied. The RAR file was denied. The jar file alerted, um, but then denied because it was recognized as a jar. And then finally the PDF uh, was allowed through because the, the action was set to alert. This one wasn't in the block list. So at this point, file blocking is working absolutely fine. However, I'd like to take this a little bit further. So the file types that I'm most interested in is the PE or portable executable files and the EXE files. Now, I want to have the ability to download these files through the security rule, but I would like to have a prompt before I download the file, like a, are you sure you want to do this? We can achieve this by creating a new file blocking profile with an additional rule which has the continue action for both PE and EXE file types. So what I'm going to do is go back to the file blocking security profiles. So we're going to go to objects, file blocking, and then I'm going to clone this basic file blocking profile. So highlight it, click clone, and then click OK. Then I'm going to go into the profile. I'm going to rename it to internal continue FB. Then I'm going to click on these file types. I'm going to search for XE and PE and then I'm going to delete them from this block rule and then click OK. And then I'm going to go back in and then I'm going to find the continue rule 
and then I'm going to click on the file types and then I'm going to add PE and I'm going to add EXE and then I'm going to click OK. Then we've got to go to the security profile groups and then we're going to find internal. Then we're going to change this internal FB to the internal continue FB and then click OK. And then we can hit commit. And then we can go back to the Windows Lab Client and then test the download again. Okay, so I'm back at the Windows 10 Lab Client. So let's try and download the PDF again. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to save link as. Uh, I know I've already got this downloaded, but let's overwrite that again. So click save. And that works. How about the jar file? That's still blocked, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's good. So let's go back. How about the raw file? That's still blocked. Perfect. And then finally, the .exe. Okay, so I don't get a block, an entire block. I get a an option to continue, which is good. Now, I can take a few seconds just to think, do I really want to download this file? Is this something that I need? Is this something that's safe? So in this case, I'm happy. So I'm going to click continue. So I was able to download the file successfully. Now we can go back to the firewall. Uh, let's take a look at the data filtering logs. So as you can see, we've got the alert again on the PDF. So the allow and then the jar file was denied. The raw file was denied. And now on this Windows PE file, I get a block continue. And if I refresh this again, I now can see that there was, when I click the continue button, I get the action continue, which is allow. So that's brilliant. That works out perfect. So that's what I would call a successful lab. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Over the next coming weeks, I will be uploading more videos where I will be sharing more content about Palo Alto firewall features and technologies and how to configure them. If you like this video, I'm sure you know what to do by now, but just in case you don't, please hit that like button below and share with your friends and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. If you have any ideas of video content you want me to create, please put them in the comments below as I would love to hear your feedback on any aspect of my channel. Please keep watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.